is that we're at pre-1994 levels today with respect to our CO2 footprint. And as I indicated, the time that we exited Kyoto in 2001, from 2000 to 2014, we reduced our emissions by over 18% in this country. So we've led the world. So Kyoto was a success? No, I'm just no, sort of no, confused no, no. because we pulled out of Kyoto. Kyoto uh, didn't prompt the 18% reduction. Okay. It was American innovation and technology that prompted uh, the reductions in CO2. That's where the focus should be as far as discussions. There seemed to be an implication uh, during your um, back and forth with the uh, White House press corps that the rest of the world wanted the United States in it to slow down the United States. Do you believe that? Oh, I believe that, I think the Paris Agreement very much so put us at an economic disadvantage. No, I understand and, 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 and you believe and that was believe, the intentional, that was the oh, motivation? I think, I think the rest of the world applauded what we did in Paris. And, and we have to go back, have to go back, Chuck, and well, why did at, they applaud it? Because it put us at an economic disadvantage. But I think also, so you Chuck, think this is a global, you think that the globe, that these countries got together to slow down the United States economy? Well, why did China, why did China and India and not have to take any steps until 2030. Why did, China, why did India condition their CO2 reductions uh, upon receiving two and a half trillion dollars of aid in the agreement? We were going to take steps front-loading our costs while the rest of the world waited uh, to, CO, uh, to reduce their CO2 footprint. That's the reason it put us at a very much an economic disadvantage internationally. But Chuck, here's, here's the deal. We, we have led, as I've indicated, this effort since, since the year 2000 with the reductions in our CO2 footprint and are at pre-1994 levels today. Not because of government mandate largely, not because of Paris, not because of Kyoto, but because of American ingenuity and, and innovation. But I, I, just, I, I am just struck. You truly believe, though, that, the, that many of these countries signed on to Paris and were trying to get the United States to sign on to it for, for economic reasons? If you, look at, if you look at the criticism that was levied against Paris when it was signed in 2015, mm -hmm. there was as much criticism on the environmental left as there was on the right. Of the sure, some thought and it should have gone further. And I'll tell you why. Because they were upset. In fact, the uh, James Hansen, mm -hmm. a former NASA scientist, as you know, called Paris a fake and a fraud. The general counsel uh, of the Sierra Club, contemporaneous to Paris being signed, said critical things of the agreement. The reason they said those things, Chuck, is because the rest of the world, China and India particularly, the largest polluters that we have on the planet, did not have to take any step, steps until after 2030, and the United States okay. front-loaded their costs through things like the Clean Power Plan, mm -hmm. uh, other rules here domestically that contracted our economy. It's been estimated, as you know, it's been estimated by the Heritage Study that Paris alone would cause a contraction of $2.5 trillion of gross domestic product over 10 years.